Hi, and welcome to another of my pyrography time lapse videos. This time, a black collared hawk. Hope you enjoy. Here we are again, starting with the eyes. Um, it's a little bit um, difficult to see the angle I'm at at the moment, but uh, hopefully later on you'll be able to see a bit better. I'm using the very tip of a small spear shader to get these fine details around the head, the beak and the eyes. It's, um, it's quite difficult with this type of bird and the distance the, the reference filter was taken at because we've obviously got some very very fine feathers to try and reproduce pyrography wise. Um, I've started to do up the back of the wing now. This, these, these areas I'm doing at the moment they're just um, very small little lines basically that I'm using the tip for to actually um, get the darker area. Then I quickly go over, not shading the area, but um, using very, very fine lines close to each other and back and forth. It gives a bit more texture than if you actually use the tip for shading. Here you can see me doing some of the outline of the feathers first on the wing and then going back in and doing the little shading, which um, as I said is just a series of thin lines. And always make sure that um, the feathers are darker towards the bottom of the feather where the previous feather overlaps to give you that sort of um, effect of depth. Um, here we've, we've got quite a bit of um, light shining on this uh, bird so you've got shadows, quite dark shadows from one feather shining down on the feather underneath and I've had to turn up the temperature a bit and go back and forth over the same area to get that effect as I'm doing now, you'll see uh, I'm putting some of the dark areas in, then I've gone back and done the lighter area. But it's taken um, a bit more heat than I would normally use. I like to build up my depth with um, just a, a, a light heat and keep going over the same area. But these shadow areas on the wings are really quite quite dark. Um, if you, you may be wondering what type of pen I'm using here, this is um, Quite simply, just a um, what's referred to as a Chinese wire tip burner from eBay. Um, the pen plus the burner, I think, came to about thirty pound. Um, sometimes you haven't got a UK plug on them when they arrive, uh, so I changed mine for UK plug and a fuse. Um, and but to be honest, <laughs> there's been no problem with it. As you can see I can manage quite well with this little cheap cheap burner I've not had to um, yeah anyway find the funds for an expensive razor tip or a Peter Childs while this one keeps performing I'll, uh, I'll carry on uh, my view was if this burns out I'll have to buy four or five of these to come anywhere near the cost of one of the other more popular burners I would say it's working fine it's not getting hot as you can see I have my fingers right near the tip and it's, it doesn't get hot at all I'm not stopping and resting in between. Anyway back to the uh, burners you can see I'm putting some more deeper shadows in on these feathers and there's some um, quite unusual markings on these uh, feathers that I'm having to uh, incorporate but I, I tend to go back and forth all those areas. I find that as you go back and increase your shadows to get your darks darker it will then tend to make the rest of the burning look a bit lighter than you first imagined. So I sometimes have to go back again over the lighter areas. That's why I think it's a good idea to try and get all your dark areas in first. It's a habit I haven't quite got my head around yet and I keep forgetting to do that. But it is the best idea is to find any really dark areas and put them in first. That then gives you a guide of the tonal values of the light areas, what they should look like compared to the dark area. So here we are again on the other wing doing all the little tiny areas which are just a series of small strokes and then going back over with a bit of shading to give the form of the feather. You can get the idea though of the, um, the shadows of the, of the sun shining down from the feather above giving a casting a dark shadow on the feather below and I really had to go over four or five times with a, with a bit more heat to get that, that much dark. Uh, this is all on a 3mm birch plywood sheet. Um, you would think perhaps that the sheet would um, 
distort with um, the heat being only three millimeter, but I find it doesn't seem to be a problem. It's um, stayed quite flat all the way through, even though I have had to raise the heat quite a lot. Here we are again with um, a bit more of the darker shading on the on the wings. I really should have done a little bit of um, real time in the middle here, so you could see how long it actually takes to do these feathers. It's quite deceiving time lapse, but at least it gives you an idea of um, the method I use to attack the, the burning. I don't tend to stay in one area very long. I do tend to flip around <coughs> over the burning. I get bored in one area all the while. I'll try something different, so I go somewhere else. We're starting to get quite dark over this this particular area of the uh, of the wings, and it. Um, if you can't see it, there was smoke rising from the uh, the tip because I had to go and raise the heat a little bit more than I would normally do. Finally getting down to the bottom of the wings. I must say, after doing this particular burning, which is one of a set of um, eight placemats for my wife and eight coasters, on the theme of birds, so all in all there would have been 16 birds. So I'm starting to get the hang of feathers now. And there's not, there's, I think there's only three to go now, three placemats. I've done all the coasters. But I certainly think I'll be uh, glad to do something else other than birds feathers after this. Nearly down to the bottom of this wing. It looks like I'm actually shading with the tip. But I said before, it's, it's just a series of very fine lines, very, very close together. The reason I've done that, that, that gives you the impression of the, the structure of the feather, rather than just doing a flat shaded area. Apologies if there is any noise while I'm recording this voiceover. My dog is sitting beside me, he has a habit of barking at the slightest thing. I'm hoping he... Uh, it keeps quiet for the last five, ten minutes. Back onto the body, and this is quite dark. Um, the darkest area you can see, I assume, is why this is called a black collared hawk, because it's got what looks like a, a basically a black collar around his neck. I do find it difficult with prography to try and represent all the different tones in monochrome, basically. Um, I'm used to painting with an airbrush also you can then incorporate all the different tones and colours and it makes it a bit easier to understand the drawing painting or whatever but with um, as with monochrome because you're trying to get the tools just right a little bit out and um, it doesn't look quite right so I have to keep going back and forth over areas and adjust the tones or the depth so you can actually um, understand what part of the bird we're looking at because it can all merge into one if you're not careful. The lighting might change a little bit as I've recorded this over several sessions. I usually just um, do a little bit of work each morning and then spend the rest of the day doing whatever household jobs I've been assigned. <laughs> now we're getting very dark now um, and I've had to keep the heat up because all the bottom area of this uh, hawk is, is quite dark. He's on the ground in amongst um, leaves and bushes and branches is about to take off. So under the bottom part here now I'm, I'm actually um, burning around what will be bushes and plants and leaves and general foliage. Uh, I, was, I wasn't too sure whether to include that or not or just go ahead and do the bird as if he was just on the ground but I thought no I might as well have a go and do the foliage as well. So here I'm just doing, this is actually a bit of the foliage here now, but as I was saying earlier about um, monochrome, it is quite difficult to distinguish different areas of the um, drawing, painting or whatever in monochrome, unless you get the tones right. So I did go back and forth several times. And now so I'm doing all the foliage at the bottom now, where it comes up in front of the bird's wing. And again I have to keep going back and forth and readjusting to so get that to look just right. It's basically just leaves and twigs. You get to, uh, so this is a rather large leaf now. 
leaves themselves can be quite difficult as well unless you get the veins right it doesn't tend to look like a leaf so that was um, quite a challenge in its own I think they've come out uh, all right in the end now I've done to the leaves I'm now doing the wing that goes behind the leaves just so that um, we can fill in that last area we're very close to the end now it's starting to take shape again there's some more foliage here and then there's a bit more um, up the side so I'm now doing the, the, the very ends of the wings and the foliage that's um, either in front of or beside the wing I had to lower the temperature again to do the, the foliage and see I'm going back and forth again because I'll have to adjust the shading and now a bit more along the bottom allow room for the border that I'm going to put in I was quite pleased it does actually look like foliage I was quite pleased a bit of grass and now we're on to the final step the border all I'm using here is a ball tip and just dotting the area just to give a I just like the the hand crafted effect that you get from uh, using the ball tip and a hand crafted border and nearly there and we will soon have the finished product hope you enjoyed the video thank you